Cinema 4D Release 25 is here with a fresh look and a fantastic set of features. Let's explore the highlights in the fall release. Cinema 4D R25 makes the best user interface even better. An updated scheme and icon set offer a fresh modern spin on Cinema 4D's classic look. This new look is designed to intuitively communicate what's important, while minimizing distractions to put more focus on your artwork. New dynamic palettes change their content based on the current document mode, the active tool, or the active object. The Asset Browser, Timeline, Coordinate Manager, and Material Manager all fly out from hot corners around the viewport. These enhancements to our GUI technology power new layouts that make great use of space and ensure that the tools you need are always close at hand. I've always loved that Cinema 4D allows you to easily switch between multiple projects, making it easy to copy and reference other elements. Now it's even easier to see what files you have open and switch between them thanks to browser-like tabs at the top of the window. Another great new usability improvement comes in the Attribute Manager's many numeric entries. Often you need to enter a specific value, but usually you just want to tweak things a bit. And now you can just click and interactively drag any numeric field to change the value. To mix a bit more precision with your creativity, Click into the field and use the up-down arrows. The position of the cursor will determine the precision of the change, so you can easily dial in changes that are both big and small. The Asset Browser introduced in S24 offers easy access to your own objects, materials, and other assets, in addition to a huge library of content that comes with your Maxon 1 or Cinema 4D subscription. In fact, we've added assets every month since the launch of S24, and you'll continue to see more assets added on an ongoing basis. You can always browse what's new via the new content smart search. With R25, the Asset Browser now supports presets as well, and you can search, manage, and share presets just like all the other content. Of course, there's extensive support for all your favorite C4D presets, including color swatches, gradients, cap and bevel profiles, spline curves, and brushes. There's also a new simplified browser mode that lets you easily dock a searchable palette of specific assets into your layout for easy access. Or if you just want quick access to one specific asset, you can add it directly to any icon palette. But the best part is the extensive new preset support for objects, tags, tools, and other elements with attributes. You can save multiple presets for these items and easily apply presets via a new dropdown in the Attribute Manager. Clicking this pops up a small searchable asset browser with bigger thumbnails, and you can click the crown icon to choose which preset should be applied by default. Logos and other vector art are at the heart of many 3D projects, and with Cinema 4D R25, you can natively import Illustrator, PDF, and SVG artwork. There's no need to resave files into legacy formats. Just drag the artwork into Cinema 4D. Layers, colors, stroke, and fill information are all imported, so you can use them when recreating the artwork in 3D. But it's really not necessary because transforming 2D art into 3D is easy thanks to the vector import object. You can choose how much extrusion should be added to each path and the distance between each path or each layer within the artwork. Filled paths are automatically extruded, and a sweep is applied to represent any strokes. Everything is assigned a color based on your original artwork, so you can simply apply a display color shader using Cinema 4D's standard materials or Redshift. It just takes a few clicks to turn any 2D design into 3D artwork. And if you need to make path-specific tweaks, simply activate the hierarchy mode, or you can always make the object editable to individually animate each element. We've continued to extend Cinema 4D's modern scene nodes core, but before I get into specifics, I want to talk about an exciting new option to tap into the flexibility and power of scene nodes while still taking advantage of the features and familiarity of classic Cinema 4D. 
When we introduced the scene manager in S24, there was a lot of excitement around combining the power of the new scene nodes core with the creative and intuitive workflow of Cinema 4D's classic object manager. And that's still the goal. But as we saw the excitement around some of the capsule assets that we delivered with the scene manager, we realized there was another opportunity to make the power of scene nodes accessible now. In Cinema 4D R25, you can now use capsules directly in the object manager. Capsule primitives like the seven segment display can be added directly and used just like any other object. While capsule objects can use hierarchy and the parameters you specified to do even more. And best of all, selection and geometry modifiers can be applied just like deformers to create some outstanding procedural geometry effects. You can even add scene node templates and double click their icons to create independent node systems directly in classic Cinema 4D. It's all the parametric power you love about Cinema 4D and the extended functionality of plugins without the hassle of ensuring that they're installed or supported wherever you're working or rendering. The power of capsules in classic C4D really shines with the new data integration feature. With the new import data node, you can load CSV files into scene nodes and use them to create and modify entire 3D scenes. Or you can simply use provided capsules from the Maxon Asset Library to visualize the data in creative ways, from bar charts to pins and flight paths on a globe. This opens up powerful templating possibilities, especially combined with a new option to use a command line parameter within scene nodes. Splines are so important in the Cinema 4D workflow, and now you can create and modify splines within the scene nodes core. The spline primitive group allows the creation of new spline capsules, and a number of primitives are included, from C4D favorites like Text, Helix, and Inside, to a few new additions like the segment, which makes it easy to create a simple line. Of course, that's just the beginning of the powerful effects and capsules you can create with splines inside scene nodes. We've also made it easier to define parametric selections for geometry modifiers, thanks to a new selection parser. You can define a selection based on existing stored selection names, indices, or a combination of multiple selection sets. We've also added new options to distribute objects along a surface based on blue noise. This allows you to arrange objects semi-randomly with minimal overlap, and it's great for representing cell packing or other natural distributions of objects along a surface. Finally, the track modifier tag makes it easy to tweak existing animation. You can adjust timing easily for an object or an entire hierarchy and limit the effect to specific tracks. Use the scaling to speed up or slow down animation, or the posterize mode to create a stop motion effect. The spring mode makes it easy to add secondary animation, and the smoothing mode can iron out wrinkles in motion capture animation. In S24, we introduced new simplified render settings for Redshift users, and those have now rolled out to all supported DCCs. We're now continuing to make Redshift more intuitive in R25 with some tweaks to the interface of light objects. Even better, we've added an option to quickly convert C4D's lights into Redshift. Redshift users can enjoy these integration enhancements in addition to some of the great features released in recent months, including support for Mac Metal and M1 systems, OSL, OpenColorIO, and ACES support, and improved dispersion and caustics. So that's a quick look at the highlights of Cinema 4D R25, but the best way to experience this fantastic new update is to download and try it yourself. R25 is available immediately in the Maxon app for both Maxon One and Cinema 4D subscribers. And you can install it alongside any other Cinema 4D version to experience the new UI and features without interrupting production. If you aren't a subscriber and you want to try out the new features, you can start a Maxon One trial via Maxon app and explore all the great new workflows and technology in the Maxon family this fall.